Well, hello there. Hello. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday, friends and lovers, and thank you for joining us. I'm Robert. This is Amy. Hey. And this is 5 Minutes with Robert Naser. Yep. Today is Sunday, August 2nd, the 215th day of 2020. 145 days until Christmas. Christmas. Can you imagine Christmas? I can. You have a better imagination than me. <laughs> Already living in it. We need to do it. That's kind of sweet. Or scary. And 90 days left until Halloween. Yep. That's almost done, actually. Amy's already gone Halloween shopping. <laughs> I've got my Halloween bandages on. <laughs> that too. <laughs> but that's a year-round uh, yeah, thing for you. I guess it is. And it is August 2nd, and on this day in 1776, just 244 years ago today, the delegates of the Continental, Continental Congress of the United States signed the Declaration of Independence. What? What? That was in July 4th? Yeah. And apparently this is <laughs> this is something they've been straightening out recently. Uh, yeah, on August 2nd, 1776, members of the Congress affixed their signatures to an enlarged copy of the Declaration of Independence. Wow. 56 congressional delegates in total signed the document, including some who were not president, present at the vote approving the Declaration. Exactly one month before signing the document, Congress had accepted a resolution put forward by Richard Henry Lee that stated, resolved that these united colonies are and right ought to be free and independent states, that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown, and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved. Mm. Congress adopted the more poetic Declaration of Independence, drafted by Thomas Jefferson two days later on July 4th. Oh, nice. Yes. The President of Congress, John Hancock, and its secretary, Charles Thompson, immediately signed the handwritten draft, which was dispatched to nearby printers. But yes, the uh, signing of, there were all but two who refused to sign. Oh. And four who didn't agree with the declaration, but chose to sign anyway to show unity. Okay. Uh, but that signing did take place on August 2nd, 1776. So happy anniversary, signers. You know, also, yes. Yeah, I was just going to say that that, you know, we talk about these things like, yeah, you know, as one does, but... <laughs> Honestly, guys, I mean, most of, you, most of our audience knows this, but, you know, it's just something to step back and look at and say, my gosh, this is um, 200 years of the most radical, most controversial thing that's ever happened in the history of humankind. And dangerous. There have been good movies and, and books written about what happened to the original signers. Yes. Many of them paid dearly for sticking their neck out. They did. So those two people who refused to sign... Um, you know, you might call them cowards, but <laughs> you, you also might think, well, I don't know, may, maybe they had their reasons. Yeah, um, they, cowards. <laughs> but they, they knew what they were up against. Yes. And, you know, it's easy to say cowards, but what if it's their family that's whose lives are on the line? Very true. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, cowards, but I don't want to be too quick with that. Exactly. You're right. Exactly. Also on this day, the late Jim Capaldi was born in 1944. Who is this? Jim Capaldi was the drummer for the band Traffic. Oh, okay. Yes. What What did they play? I'm not familiar with them. Well, my favorite Traffic song is called The Low Spark of High-Heeled Boys. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. From the album The Low Spark of High-Heeled Boys. <laughs> so men who wear high heels um, aren't very sparky. There's actually a longer story behind that, okay. and it's not quite as um, 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 colorful as you're making it sound. Okay. But fans of the band Traffic, who appreciate such hits as Rock and Roll Stew, All right. mm -hmm, will uh, appreciate that the late Jim Capaldi had his birthday today. He would have been 76, but unfortunately he passed away in 2005 at age 60. Is there, is there a recipe for Rock and Roll Stew? <laughs> It's a recipe for rock and roll stew. Har, har, har. And uh, that recipe was get Jim Capaldi and Steve Winwood together in a band. Okay. See, I know you know who Steve Winwood is because yes. Amy knows everything about the 80s. I know. And Steve Winwood saw his second great career in the 80s. Mm-hmm. And you would think he was a keyboard whiz. 
given his 80s songs, but actually he's a phenomenal guitar player, Steve okay. Winwood. Um, Good he, to know. Yeah, he was a keyboard player for Traffic for the first couple of years and switched to guitar. All that said, yes. all the Traffic fans are like, this is so cool, and everybody else is like, I don't care. Who is this band? <laughs> he was a great drummer. He was a great musician. He co-wrote for the band. Okay, good. A uh, founding member. Fantastic. This was Stevie Winwood's band after the Spencer Davis group. Mm. I don't know who Spencer <laughs> Davis is. <laughs> Famous for their uh, song, Gimme Some Lovin'. All right, all right. Yeah, it's redone by the Blues Brothers in 1980 for the Blues Brothers movie. I could go on. Yes, he could. Yes, I could. <laughs> this is not a this is not a podcast necessarily about uh, rock and roll, but it is right now. So, of course, it is. Of course, it is. But it is also National Ice Cream Sandwich today. Ice Cream Sandwich, sandwich day, day today. Today. Yes. Yeah, so ice cream. Have sandwich. an ice cream sandwich. Or what you could do, which is what I'm going to do, because I don't have an ice cream sandwich, is I'm going to take two of the Toll House cookies that Amy made earlier this week mm. and put vanilla ice cream between them. Because it's a national responsibility it's to have like, an ice cream sandwich. It's like giving your ice cream a little hug. That's right. A little embrace. That's right. A delicious chocolate hug. <laughs> what we're listening to this week. Yeah, what are I you listening to? I don't have a podcast to? of the week, because what I'm listening to is... Mm-hmm. Besides replaying the greatest concert film from the 1980s, uh-huh. Talking Heads, Stop Making Sense, yeah. which, yes. ever, which everybody's aware of since I posted about that. <laughs> but what I am re-listening to is an episode of the R.N. Brooks Show featuring psychologist Gina Gorlin. All right. Discussing morality in psychology. Wow. What do you do when a patient comes to you and your advice say as a philosopher would be oh well you need to take a moral approach to this and stop doing this immoral thing and embrace Mm -hmm. this moral yeah that's those are some tricky questions there are she handles this very well uh link in the show notes make sure you watch that afterward but it's interesting because she makes the point that you know as a psychologist that doesn't really come up Hmm. even as an objectivist psychologist yeah with objectivist patients Mm -hmm. That just doesn't come up, huh? Because you're you're thinking like a psychologist, you don't switch to philosophy and say, "Oh yeah, stop being immoral." Yeah, I mean, well, usually when you're dealing with psychology, you want to deal, you know, do the best you can with what you have, and moral ad- admonishment is not necessarily effective. <laughs> You there, know, are, there are yeah. contexts in which it makes sense to say, stop being a bad guy, do yeah. the right thing. But in the in a psychological, in a session with your psychologist, that's not the right time for that. Yeah. But what that got me thinking of, see, it all rolls together with yeah. Jim Capaldi and drums and psychology. Mm-hmm. Last week we talked about justice and treating the character of people with the same respect for facts that you do nature, mm-hmm. same as we do when we deal with facts of reality. Yep. So given the nature of an entity X, we can expect a certain result if yep. we respect its nature, what it is. So given the character of a person Y, we can expect a certain result if we respect his or her nature, what or who they are, uh-huh. which brought to mind the yeah. double tree chocolate chip cookie. Mm, yes, that's exactly how that flows logically. Yes. The trouble is that this week Amy made Toll House chocolate chip cookies, mm-hmm. the Nestle chocolate chip cookies. Yes. So instead I went with peach cobbler. <laughs> so Again, another logical inference that uh, yes, flows. A logical leap, except for the logical part. But it was definitely a leap. <laughs> See... When you're determining how to treat somebody justly yeah, or how to decide their place in your hierarchy of values in your life, mm-hmm. you have to respect their nature. You have to you know, take what they are and act accordingly. And it's the nature of a, uh, of a um, organic um, being that is capable of movement and has a metabolism not to eat too much peach cobbler or Toll House cookies or Double Tree cookies. Yes. But more than that, if you want the result, uh-huh. 
If you want a good cookie, yeah. If you want a good cobbler, yes. People have seen the picture of my cobbler from today on Facebook, and they're like, "No, it looks dry. It is a little dry." Mm. Although, if you like crust, yeah, it's it's, it's it's a little cakey. Yeah, no, it's it it's needs I, it needs ice cream. Yeah. If you want the result, you've got to respect the nature. You've got to follow the recipe. So, for example, the peach cobbler recipe. I didn't follow a recipe. I followed my recipe. And what that is, is you take the bottom of the peach cobbler from the recipe that Southern Living Magazine posts, mm -hmm. and you take the top of the recipe from Barefoot in the Kitchen, which sounds kind of disrespectful, but it's the name of a website. Yeah. Links to all of them in the show notes. But the Barefoot in the Kitchen recipe includes an undercrust, and the Southern Living Magazine recipe includes an overcrust. <laughs> And in my mind, you really need both. I was never one of those crustless this people. This goes back to that whole ice cream sandwich concept where you have, um, you know, a crust on the bottom and then the top. That's kind right. Kind of giving it an embrace. You've got to make, make it the recipe that fits your ends. Mm -hmm. My end is a peach cobbler with crust on the top and crust on the bottom. But the recipe I really want to talk about yeah? is the recipe for disaster. Oh, that sounds delicious. Yes. <laughs> so if you want disaster, well, see, I learned a long time ago. Mm -hmm. It was probably in my 20s, which means I should have learned it even sooner than that. <laughs> That's when you were making all of your mistakes. In my 20s, a few years ago. <laughs> no, a long time ago, I learned there is a recipe, a no-fail, works every time, foolproof recipe yes. for disappointment. Something you can trust. That's right. Mm -hmm. So anytime you want or need to feel disappointment, yeah. anytime that's what you're looking for a prescription for, mm -hmm. there's a recipe, a way to make that happen. You can't miss. It works every time it's, it's tried. So here's the recipe. Uh -huh. I'm going to give you my recipe for disappointment. Okay. Decide in advance exactly what must happen and how it must happen in every detail for you to feel satisfied. Mm -hmm. Decide in advance exactly what must happen, how it must happen in every detail for you to be satisfied. That is a recipe for disappointment and it works every single time. If you go through those steps, you will be disappointed. So, so you, one cup of rigid expectation. Yes. Okay. That's right. Anything else? That's really all it takes. It, it never fails. It doesn't take any kind of like um, so maybe some sardines or, or. Um, <laughs> well, for me, sardines would definitely, or... definitely would add to the disappointment. So I'm good with that too. <laughs> I'm not really a sardines person. Liver. Yeah. Liver. You know, I did not yeah. originate this idea of a recipe for disappointment, although I've tweaked it and made it my own. I um, can't remember who I, where I first read that. But I'm not usually a fan of metaphors to me. Yeah. I'm like, just tell me the thing. Don't make it cute. But this idea of a recipe for disappointment mm -hmm. or a recipe for disaster, that turned out to be extremely useful to me. And maybe it'll be useful to the folks listening to 5 Minutes with Robert Naser. So I posted on Facebook, I also have a recipe for calm. Oh, okay. Before you get into that, Jennifer says, what if I have an appetite for destruction? <laughs> <laughs> then you only need two ingredients. Guns and roses. <laughs> Guns. Oh, my God. <laughs> so bad. This cake works every time it's tried. <laughs> All right. But we do have another, actually, a comment from Jim um, about traffic. Going back a little bit before we go on, uh, Dave Mason was one of Traffic's members, right? That's correct. That is correct. Although he left just before the uh, 1971 Low Spark of High Heeled Boys. Okay. Which is not necessarily my favorite Traffic album, but it is my favorite Traffic song. It's about 11 minutes long. And, you know, Yes is my favorite band, so I like long songs. 17 minutes. That's a good song. And I know people want to ask more questions about Jim Capaldi and traffic. Mm -hmm. He died of stomach cancer. Oh. Which means we can't make the obvious crack that he died in traffic. 
Oh, God. Lord. He I said thought, it. I, I can't thought you were going to it. say he died of peach cobbler. <laughs> My peach cobbler is not that bad. <laughs> Actually, it's really good. So. Yes, but next time, I'll tell you what, it, this recipe calls for boiling the peaches. Oh, really? In sugar, water, and lemon juice. Oh. And then pouring the whole mixture into... And I looked at it, you know, it was still wet water. There's no way they want me to pour Goo? this whole... Th- and I wonder if maybe it wouldn't have turned out better if I had just poured this cup of of sugar and water and goo in there. So, next time. Hmm. Okay. Because it's good, but it could be better. So, I have a recipe for calm. Just like I have a recipe for disappointment. Number one, you start by emptying the mixing bowl. Mm-hmm. And the mixing bowl is your mind. Okay. It doesn't have to be totally empty, and it doesn't have to be completely clean. Just mix it, uh, empty it the best you can. And then the first thing you put in the bowl is self-gratitude. So you're doing this recipe, and you deserve thanks for that. Appreciation from yourself. Number three, apply slow, focused breathing for 30 seconds. Number four, add one of your favorite relaxing songs or other pieces of music. Remember, this is a recipe for calm. Number five, find one positive thought and mix that in for 30 seconds. Spend 30 seconds with that positive thought. Number six, pull your shoulders back, chin up, eyes intent, and then relax your eyes, chin, and shoulders. Mm-hmm. Doesn't that leave you where you were? No, it puts you in a whole different place. Number seven, with a paper and pencil or pen. Write down one small but significant thing you can and will do to address your current level of excitement, anxiety, anger, disappointment, frustration, whatever it is you're seeking calm from. Just one small thing that you can and will do. Number eight, set the paper aside. Mm -hmm. And number nine, look into the distance for 30 seconds. It doesn't matter what you look at, just look in the distance. (laughs) Repeat any steps you like until you achieve the desired result. That is my my recipe for calm. Okay, good. So, to our commenters online, who I know you're following intently. I am. What are your go-to recipes? What are the recipes you find that you returned to, return to, What are your habits? What are your patterns? Mm -hmm. What recipes are you following without even realizing it? Mm. We've talked about patterns in the past. Yep. What are your patterns adding up to? What are your recipes? Well, Linda says, for peach cob- cobbler, next time add a generous drizzle of heavy cream before bakering. baking. So <laughs> that's uh, heavy cream. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> but no, I know what you're saying. We we'll need to um, buy it. We usually just have half and half. Uh, yes, recipe for calm from Linda. Hot tub and an adult beverage. Mm. That's good. Yeah, I wonder, um, you know, we didn't go over the show notes well, that well earlier on for, with, with me. <laughs> um but I am trying to, trying to think uh, what calms me down. What does calm you down? What's your recipe? I mean, I like I like breathing deeply. Mm-hmm. You know, breathing into into the abdomen, then to the chest, and then breathing out from the abdomen, and then from the chest. So it's like squeezing that tooth of, tube of toothpaste and getting as much oxygen in you as possible, and releasing as much air out as possible before you take the next breath. Well, the reason I like the idea of recipes is because that is one ingredient in an effective recipe. And I like having whole recipes for these things. I find that that's real power. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what recipes for good or for ill do you return to over and over? And if those recipes aren't getting you the results you want, Mm Are you willing to change them? Will you try different ingredients? Or prepare them in a different order? Are you willing to go on an anger or frustration or disappointment diet? Mm. 
Are you willing to stop preparing the recipes that aren't empowering you? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I know a lot of folks, they, they kind of get fed up with Facebook and they say, I'm leaving. And then you see them the next day on <laughs> Facebook. Going right back to the same <laughs> breakfast. Yeah. Um, yeah, I suppose you have to have a plan of action when you go on Facebook. Otherwise, you might get lost in it. And you might just keep scrolling on the news feed, mm -hmm. which isn't very productive or very happy making. Well, we've returned to Facebook a couple of times, and that's related because that that uh, you know, people talk about internet addiction or nowadays social network addiction, mm -hmm. and then they slam the door on Facebook and say, "I am leaving Facebook for 30 days," and you know they're back in a week, or maybe they're back in 30 days, but. Yeah. It doesn't seem to be empowering them, and the reason is they are not in charge of that. It is it is like an addiction in the sense that they can't manage their consumption and enjoy mm -hmm. it and appreciate it and get the juice out of it, the values out of it. And I want that for people, that ability to say, "Yeah, I'm going to make this a value to me, for me, and in the way I want it to be. Right. Uh, and that, that's it. Yeah. It's what you were talking about with mastery, having mastery over something. That's right. <laughs> Cynthia says, make Facebook your bitch. <laughs> well, if that's your style. Um, you know, I usually, usually the people that I like control and kind of degrade a little bit, those are the ones I put in the rearview mirror, like right. we talked about last week. Yes, yes. <laughs> if, if that's what I got it, but I can see it. I can well, see it. You know, I can totally I, see that I because did have a, there's a lot yeah. to criticize about Facebook. I did have a, a moment of empowerment yesterday, and um, I hope <laughs> I didn't cheese too many people off when I did this. But um, there was one particular post that wasn't going well. There was nothing positive or informative or you know, nice about the post and people were commenting and it was, so was just... was it politics or COVID or both? It was both. Oh, yeah, that's that's a challenge and, these oh, days. Oh, that, that, there's a recipe for disaster, everybody. <laughs> one cup of politics, one cup of COVID. Um, delicious. Um, but I decided to, you know, I thought to myself, you know what, Amy, assert your personhood. You know, so what did you e do? Extend your aura. <laughs> I changed the privacy privacy setting of the post to only me. So you made it go away. I made it go away. Poof. Oh. And then I did another post after that saying that I Trump, had... BLM, mask. <laughs> oh. oh, no, that wasn't what you said? <laughs> no. So, oh, my goodness. <laughs> we're, we're all going to be able to look back on this podcast and listen to it, you know, a year or two from now and just laugh our asses off, right? As the philosopher Bruce Springsteen said, someday we'll look back on this and it will all seem funny. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that was very empowering, just taking it down and, um, you know, not listening to it anymore. I just didn't, you know, I could have said, don't send me notifications, but it's on my wall. So it's not something that I could just ignore. And I, I don't I don't blame anybody for commenting. I should say this publicly. I love you all. I truly do. I just um, think that it, it was, um, you know, not the most productive uh, sort of thing. <laughs> so yes. I gave everyone a gift of uh, that, a little less frustration. That sounds very wise. Yeah. It's funny, too, that you say you love them all. Mm -hmm. Because what's strange is that you mean it. I do. If your Facebook experience, <laughs> if your friends list is full of people you don't like, that you don't have at least some some goodwill, some love for. Yeah. Yeah, it's time to prune that friends. I mean, it depends on what you're using Facebook for, but right. Yeah. I was asking myself questions the other day. I said, why am I polite to people I have no particular reason to be polite to? Mm -hmm. And somebody was posting in one of the uh, private groups or Ayn Rand groups, whatever, you know. Uh, well, if people are selfish, then, you know, they're, they're, why are they nice to people? Or why would they, you know, why do I make efforts to do things for people I'll never see again? Why tip wait staff and other professionals? Mm -hmm. Why tip? Yeah. Why tip generously? Why tip at all? Why give to charity? Mm. 
Yeah. Why donate to provide aid during natural disasters? Why vote in elections? Mm. No, there's kind of a loaded one. <laughs> well, I mean, one vote will never, ever decide an election. I see what you mean. Yeah. And then the last question that I found myself asking myself is, whose world is this anyway? Mm. Yeah. Usually the people who come to me with questions like that, again, usually in philosophy conversations, have a sense that they are very, very small in this world. Mm, yeah. That this world is about and even belongs to the other seven billion people out there. But whose world is it out there? Whose world are you caring about charity for right. whose world are you are you providing any relief to people in hurricanes mm -hmm. whose world are you giving blood for uh, whose world are you tipping wait staff in why do you care about how you present to this world and the answer is Every one of those things, being polite to people you have no reason to be polite to and may never meet again, making efforts for people you'll never see again, tipping your wait staff, giving to charity, providing aid to causes that you care about, voting in elections, every one of those efforts reinforces this ain't their world. This is your world. Mm -hmm. This is your life. I've said it before and I'll say it again. You are the center of the universe. Who the hell else would be? So I do Cheers those things that. because this is my world. Yep. The restaurant that I leave tips at down the street is my restaurant. The, the elections that I vote in, those are my elections. Mm -hmm. It's all mine. It's all yours. It's your life. You know, some of this impact is strictly psychological. It's strictly spiritual. Voting in an election. Exercising your franchise. And, and then having that right to talk to your friends about it and say, yeah, this is what I think people should do. Yep. Might not make any difference that I did it. Or that five of us did it. You know, maybe if I reach out to 100 people on Facebook in a compelling way, maybe that'll have some impact. Maybe if I do a podcast and reach 1,000 people and... 10% of them vote a little differently. Maybe that'll have an impact. Maybe everything I do has an impact. This is my world. This is your world. Mm -hmm. Never underestimate your power and presence. Because this is your life. And if everything goes to hell around you, all that matters is your life. Yes. And on a related note to that, I have a... I posted a meme to my wall today. Memes. And it says, um, look look at this. How ridiculous is this? I printed out the meme. <laughs> why is that, I don't think why you is that ridiculous? It. This is because oh, I don't so know why I printed it, it out. <laughs> I've got my laptop in front of me. Oh. So Because uh, <laughs> we, we're paper and pencil people. So it says, 2020 still has a chance to be your most meaningful, most productive, most important year. If you... Focus on what you can control. Commit to actions that actually deliver results. Look for ways to get 1% better every day. You've got five months left. Finish strong. That almost sounds like a recipe. It Focus does. on what you can control. Yep. Commit to actions that actually deliver results. Look for ways to get 1% better every day. 1%, that's easy. Except yeah. if you do that every day, how does that compound over the course of a year? Right. That's a great recipe. It is a great recipe. Outstanding. So do we have any questions? Oh, we have so many questions and comments. It's so wonderful. Well, and but, I I, but any that these. should be addressed right away, because I do have news. Oh, oh. Um, well, actually, I've got, I've got a statement that I need, I need to make. Yes. So. Um, then I'll drink my coffee and you, you make can... your statement. I, don't, I should have uh, brought it over here, but yes. we, we have a hat. We do have a hat. And uh, let me just 
take a, a small little break. Yeah, go ahead, oh. please. Um, sure and get the hammer <laughs> off camera. It's, it's oh, only sure. just five feet away. <laughs> so I I was this, this is the, the magical hat of values. And, um, and so because I've been in a rut at home, working from home, being at home, 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 here I am. Um, it's, uh, it's been difficult to get myself to actually switch gears. Um, so I created a hat of values. So, so in this hat, you see a whole bunch of different pieces of paper that are all folded up uh, so nice this, and neat. Is so this you concepts in a hat? No. We draw out two concepts and try to relate them philosophically? <laughs> no, it's not quite that. It's one of our favorite glow party games. What is this hat full of? This hat is full of values. Values. That, that values I, I want to partake in that um, sometimes I just I don't think about that often because I'm so wrapped up in my work or so wrapped up in whatever I'm doing um, they, I kind hand. of neglect them a little bit so um, I decided to write them all down on paper you know they range from you know me playing my saxophone to uh, me and Robert getting up and practice swing, practicing swing dance so that was last night's um, that we put in the the envelope of things we've already done yes practice swing dance and that's what we did last night we took i don't know a half hour maybe an hour perhaps and in the kitchen in the kitchen and we practiced but with party lights with party lights <laughs> very important well but, amy amy tells me the surface of the kitchen floor is most appropriate for that yeah you can, and she's you can the dancer. spin around a little bit easier so as opposed to carpeting so uh, so values that's what and a I hat. Did. You know that, and, and I was I'm very proud of this fact actually. My values in, in the hat. Um, so every day, we can if we have a half an hour extra of the day, we just don't know what to do, and otherwise we're just going to be sitting on our butts watching some you know Perry Mason or something. Not that there's um, anything wrong with that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Just kind of break up the day, do something new, add a little value to your day. And, and give it that variety, give it that little something special, that extra cinnamon on the peach cobbler or that you know heavy cream or maybe a little bourbon in it. Um, that's what you do with your day. And, uh, and that's certainly, I think, part of the recipe. <laughs> well, a little bourbon on it? <laughs> uh, yes, but it's also funny that, that you say that because I catch myself you know, smiling or opening my eyes wide or making a facial expression, but it turns out there's a whole platform where nobody will ever see that. Mm. So the big news of the day. Oh, <gasps> big news. Everybody get excited. Five Minutes with Robert Naser. Yeah. Has always been a video show. Mm -hmm. Some people call it a vlog. A I never vlog. use that word because it sounds ridiculous to me. A video log as opposed to a weblog or blog. <laughs> <sighs> of course, we call it. The podcast, Five Minutes with Robert Naser. Mm -hmm. But podcasts were for iPods. That's where the name came from. Yeah. And A, nobody uses an iPod anymore. But B, iPods play Apple podcasts. Well, the exciting news of the week is that we are now on Libsyn. We are now on a syndication service. We're now syndicated to several other services. What? We're syndicated to Spotify. Oh. Oh my gosh. So you can listen to Five Minutes with Robert Naser on Spotify. But then you can't see Amy in the funny faces. But well. still, if you are that kind of person who wants to just hear us at the gym, there you go. Now, within 24 to 192 hours, mm -hmm. <laughs> in other words, within two to nine days, uh, the folks at Apple should do their fit should complete their review of our RSS feed, and then you will be able to listen to Five Minutes with Robert Naster on Apple Podcasts as well, and we will own the world. We'll own right. the planet. So you can listen to us while you're playing saxophone or practicing swing dance or vacuuming. You whatever know, value you're you pulled on. out of your hat. Yeah, whatever value you put up. You know, it's a simultaneous exponential values going on. That's right. Yeah. Now. Libsyn is probably the best podcast host out there. People will disagree with me on that, but I could have done this for free on my own website. I could have done this cheap on some cheap service, but I thought, no, let's do it, do it on Libsyn. And that cost money. Yeah. So with that said, I need to put 
an extra special thank you behind my thank yous for all of our Patreon supporters and our PayPal supporters. And uh, so thank you for that. I would have spent the money anyway, but it would have hurt more. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so with that said, show notes will be posted right after the show, as always, within the episode's uh, notes. Mm -hmm. This episode and past shows are and will be available yeah. at youtube.com slash Robert Naser, at facebook.com slash Robert Naser, mm -hmm. and on Spotify. <gasps> and soon, very soon, way too soon, almost too soon, on Apple Podcasts. Mm -hmm. And Spreaker and everywhere else. Apple's the toughest nut to crack. With Stitcher? Uh, Stitcher too, yeah. yes. Excellent. Yes. And again, if you want to be a financial supporter of this show, give us a little love. You can go to patreon.com slash Robert Naser. Yes. Or message me for my PayPal email address if you prefer. So thank you all. Thank you all so much for listening today. Please send us your recipes, recipes for success, recipes for states of mind that you want to share and yeah, achieve. Yeah, if you, if you have a particular routine in your day that you would love to share with us, I would love to hear it because um, I'm always looking for ways to kind of get myself out of my box and of my rut or whatever and, you know, run that program. And, um, you know, whether it's getting up and exercising in the morning, um, having a particular something to eat, having just some meditation time. If, if, if I mean, all of these things I would love to include more in my day. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, so now three people have mentioned adult beverages as part of their preferred recipes. <laughs> and, uh, and the art goddess Linda Cordaire of Cordaire.com does say we get a lot of people who visit the gallery to achieve calm. Lots of ingredients. Our pantry is full. Yes. It, and that's absolutely right. Go to Cordaire.com. Cordaire.com. That's right. C-O-R-D-A-I-R.com. Oh. Yes. Oh, Mary Aline has food on her mind. So <laughs> she's, oh, Whole Foods she, Deli. <laughs> Whole Foods Deli is eating chocolate in your hat. <laughs> mm, we should have had chocolate in the hat. Well, I've been drinking coffee. And I, I know it probably looks like a stein, but it's coffee tonight. Mm hmm Yeah, That's, and I, this, is a, this is not a mug of beer or ale. What are you drinking? Water. Water. <laughs> well, coffee is almost always in my recipes. It's not in the peach cobbler, but it just as well could have been. Oh, Linda is blowing kisses to us from Napa. Super sweet. So, with that said, as we approach the end of this five-minute period here. Yeah. <laughs> thank you all for being here. Bit of a casual uh, podcast today, I think. Or audio cast or video cast. Once we get on Apple Podcasts, I'll stop stumbling over the word podcast because... It'll truly be a podcast. It will be reality. And we will be so proud. And we're proud that you're with us. We are very happy and very proud of all of you. That's right. So thank you so much. As always, we do wish you success. We wish you happiness. We wish you good recipes. 